Hey guys, it's Ruth with BodyByRuth.com, the place to be where you're going to learn to love the body and the life that you live in. Today we're going to talk all about the importance of adding resistance training to your weekly routine, especially if you're a woman over 40. So if you're over 40 and you have found that your metabolism is slowed, you're starting to gain weight, then listen in. All right, guys, so I get this question a lot. A lot of women start to find themselves gaining weight, especially after 40. They're not doing anything differently, but the pounds just start to creep in. And so they wanna know what they can do to help boost their metabolism. Now, a lot of women, when they start to gain weight, the first thing they think of is cardio, or I need to go low carb, and I'm here to debunk those myths, and instead of thinking of doing long bouts of steady state cardio or eliminating food groups, we're going to address the muscle that you have. So this episode is all about helping you learn about the importance of adding resistance training to your weekly routine. So the first thing we're going to address is why is it important? Well, number one, after 30, we start to lose between five and 8% of our muscle mass every decade. So 30, 40, 50, you're just gonna start to naturally decrease less if you aren't doing any kind of resistance training now. So we can combat that by incorporating resistance training into our weekly routine. The other thing that we need to keep in mind is when we do resistance training, we're also helping to improve our bone density, which also decreases after we turn 40. So we know we need to do it so that we can build more muscle and we know we need to do it because it's going to boost our, um, or improve our bone density. Okay, so how do we incorporate resistance training? I like to incorporate resistance training two to four times a week. And as long as you're doing about 20 minutes, it could be some days just focusing on upper body, other days it could be lower body, but you wanna do two to four times a week so that you are building lean muscle. Now, what should you include? So I do a lot of things with body weight resistance. Think of things like squats and lunges and side lunges, um, anything that is your body weight going down and up. Push-ups, tricep dips, you can use your body weight and you will burn lots of calories by building lean muscle. I also like to incorporate dumbbells and dumbbells are going to just help build that lean muscle as well. And don't be afraid to go heavy. You definitely want to be feeling the burn where it's difficult to finish the last few reps like need the last three or four um, when you're using a dumbbell. If it's not burning, you need to go heavier. I suggest you do three sets of eight to 12 reps and at that last set of reps, it should be really feeling like a lot of burn. All right, so two to four times a week, 20 minutes include dumbbells, include body rate resistance. I also love to use loop bands, which are those fabric bands that you put around your thighs. Um, they're amazing for lower body work. And I also love the um, rubber resistance bands. They're super easy to pack if you're traveling. You can throw them in your bag. You could even put it in your purse if you wanted to so that you can get some great resistance while you're traveling and not have to worry about carrying a heavy dumbbell. All right, so no excuse. If you don't have equipment, use your body weight, but definitely do it. It's going to help improve your overall muscle tone, which is gonna help your body burn calories. So the more muscle tone you have, the more calories you're going to burn while you're binge watching your favorite show on Netflix at night, okay? Another thing that you wanna keep in mind is to make sure you're consuming enough protein. Since our bodies are made of protein, we need to be replenishing our protein daily. Rule of thumb is you wanna be eating between 0.7 and 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Um, if you are a bodybuilder, then you can do one gram per pound of body weight. Um, I'm 140, so that means I'm going to take 140 times 0.7, and that's gonna give me 98 grams of protein that I need to eat a day. Now that might sound a lot, but it really isn't. Just remember, every time you eat, 
three, four, five times a day, you're going to have protein with your meal. And it's things like eggs for breakfast, a smoothie made with kefir. Um, I might have some cottage cheese in my pancakes. Um, anything that has broccoli, quinoa, beans, lentils, those are all great sources of protein. And obviously, and those are not meat-based, but obviously if you add meat, things like grass-fed chicken and pork and beef and fish, great sources of protein. So think about how many times you're enjoying um, food throughout the day. Um, about five palm-sized portions a day will get you your daily allotment of protein. Another thing that's gonna help you maintain muscle is making sure you get enough sleep. So while we sleep, we are repairing ourselves. When we actually lift weights, we're causing small tears to occur. And it's when we sleep that those tears are going to um, repair themselves and build new muscle fibers. So if you're not getting enough sleep, you're just gonna be in a constant state of tear and not repair. So make sure you're getting between seven and eight hours of sleep a night so your body is able to repair the tear. The fifth thing we need to keep in mind when it comes to building lean muscle is to make sure our hormones are balanced. Now, our ovaries naturally produce both estrogen and testosterone, but as we age, that production starts to decline. So it's important that we're consuming foods that are gonna help boost those testosterone levels. Foods that naturally have a good amount of testosterone are things like tuna, skim milk with vitamin D, egg yolks, oysters, shellfish, beef, beans like white kidney and black beans, ginger, leafy green vegetables, and extra virgin olive oil. Now, when it comes to balancing the hormones, we also wanna make sure that our cortisol production is not too high because cortisol is the hormone that makes us store belly fat. So if you want to ensure that you're not storing belly fat, you wanna keep that cortisol level low. How do we do that? Well, you need to not be stressed. So what can you do to reduce your stress level? Number one, eat a really good, healthy, balanced diet. That means you're not eliminating whole food groups like carbs and you're watching that sugar consumption. Actually, sugar is one of those things that is actually known to trigger cortisol production. So make sure you're eating a really good, healthy, balanced diet. The third thing you wanna do is make sure you are exercising. Exercise is actually going to prevent the production of cortisol. It's gonna naturally reduce stress. So get that exercise in, but don't overdo it. Too much stress on your body or too much exercise on your body will actually cause stress. Other things that are gonna help reduce cortisol production is to try to have fun every day. Things that are gonna make you laugh, gathering with friends, doing things that make you smile, getting into nature, taking your dog for a walk. What's gonna help you de-stress, help you smile and have a good time? Do more of it. All right guys, so there you go. Some great tips that are gonna help you to build more muscle so that you burn more calories and keep those hormones balanced with a good proper diet and reduce stress so you eliminate cortisol. If you like this video, please like it. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my tips. And here's to loving the body you live in. Thanks guys.